What's up, United? If you don't already know us, my name's Kara. And I'm Josie. And here at United, we exist to point students towards Jesus. If it's your first time at United, make sure to head to the back to the room at the end of the service to one of our Connect Centers to learn more about our church, what we do, and some about you. And just for being here, you'll get a free shirt. Yes, and whether you are new or reoccurring, something you should know about United is that it is not possible without our amazing worship band. And so if you are interested or know somebody interested in being a part of the band, um, whether that's playing an instrument or singing, um, at the end of the service, you can go to the Back Connect areas to talk with either Miss Denise or Rachel about joining our band next year because we are recruiting people this summer. Speaking of worship, tonight, if you haven't noticed, is worship night. Which, a little bit about worship night, if you don't already know what it is, um, at the end of every year, we like to end kind of with a big bang and celebrate the amazing year we've had, hence the ice cream, photo booth, and the new setting. Uh, even if worship isn't really your favorite part about coming to United, we really encourage everyone to participate in whichever way you feel most comfortable whether that be sitting down, standing up, going to one of our prayer centers in the back, and just really honing into the worship. Yes, now y'all can all stand as we gather in a time of worship.
there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you have placed your faith in Jesus tonight, there is no condemnation, there are no chains, there is no guilt, for all has been washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. And that word is our testimony here tonight. That once I was dead, but now I'm alive. Once I was lost, but now I am found. Once I was in the hand of the enemy, but then Almighty God himself has rescued my soul. Is that someone's testimony tonight? So we're gonna lift this song up. Just singing our story, singing our story of redemption. So let's sing this out. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine. Jesus, you are the reason we are here tonight. God, you are the reason that we lift our hands, that we sing out our song, God, because you are the hope of the world. And in your presence, there is freedom. We don't come here just to sing songs. We come here because our faith is reignited when we sing of your worship, when we sing of your praise, when we remember all that you've done for us in our lives, God. And so God, we believe tonight, God, that there is healing, there is freedom, there can be salvation, Jesus, because we are coming into your presence, Lord. And so I pray that tonight won't just be another night. We won't just sing another song, God, but that our love for you will be reignited, that you will light the fire in our hearts for you, Jesus, and that we will experience peace like we never have before. Come have your way in this place, Lord. We glorify you, we give it all to you, Jesus.
Grab a seat. We're going to um, we're going to participate for the next few minutes uh, with four of our students in an ancient, ancient practice of the church for two thousand years. The the church since the the earliest days of the Christian movement have celebrated something called baptism, and, and different churches kind of celebrate it different ways. But here's kind of the bottom line: it's that from the very beginning of the early church, um, Christians did something to symbolize what Jesus had done on the inside. Because when a soul is healed, when when a, a life is changed by Jesus, you can't see that. Eventually you kind of see some of the the uh, some of the practices and change of, of someone's life, but you can't actually see what happens to the human heart. And so the early church participated in baptism to to show what had happened on the inside of the believers. And so sometimes it was whole family, sometimes it was adults, sometimes it was young people. But when someone would give their life to Christ, when someone would would be changed on the inside, very soon after they would get 
baptized. And the baptism is not magical. It's not special. It does not make you a Christian. It is simply a symbol of what's happened on the inside. And it's an opportunity to bring in friends and family and to bring in the community of the church to be a part of your story. So we're going to be baptizing four teenagers tonight, which we're so excited about. And, um, and again, we're just going to be asking them, you know, who is, who is Jesus to you? And they're going to say something to the effect of, he's my Lord and Savior. And then they're going to be dunked under the water. And as they go down under the water, <clears throat> that is representative of us dying to ourselves, being cleansed by Jesus and coming back up with new life, new refreshment, and a new eternity made only possible by Jesus. And so we're gonna start with Ellie and we're gonna baptize her. So super excited about that. Ellie, who is Jesus Christ to you? My Lord and Savior. All right, on that profession of faith, I'm gonna yell now. Awesome, now check out this video about our next student's story. I'm Ansley and I'm in eighth grade. I've always known Jesus, um, but I think when I was younger, I didn't really understand the concept. I just knew that I was supposed to believe and that we shouldn't sin. Um, and as I got older, I would get really close to God and then I would part. So I just had my um, like ups and downs with like being close with Him. And then this school year, I started making it a commitment to come to United in Life Groups. And that's when I really found Jesus. I never had like a specific moment when I made the decision um, to commit my life to Jesus. It definitely has grown stronger over my years of being a Christian. Um, but there were times where I like, I really was a slap in the face. <laughs> um, for me, my life has changed for the better. I have made so many new friendships and connections and I've just really, I've had my eyes opened up and seen that there's so many people in my life group and just everyone around me that love me and care about me. And there have been some sermons during United where I have, um, I've realized that I like need to change or I started making something a habit, like speaking life. And if I spoke death, then I realized like it was just kind of a thought that I had after I said something and wearing our what's the wise thing to do bracelet if it has helped me like on the wrist if I'm washing like I'll wash my dish instead of just throwing it in the sink. I want to get baptized because um, I just want this time to be my choice. I was baptized when I was a baby and I'm grateful for that but I think that it's really important that I also make it my choice. I'm Ansley and this is my testimony. All right, all right. Ansley, you got a, you got a fan section here, don't you? There's like 50 people. <laughs> That's awesome. Ainsley, who, back up just a little bit. Ainsley, who is Jesus to you? My Lord and Savior. Hi, my name is Gabriel and I'm in 11th grade. Christ was definitely in my life growing up, but it wasn't uh, like it should have been. It was very forced. We were Catholic. Christ was more of a belief rather than a relationship. I would learn to do my sacraments. I would learn to do my daily Bible uh, Wednesdays, but wasn't very connective. And most of my life I was felt just no purpose, no real connection to anything other than what I was living in. And a lot of that impacted a big part of 
a very tough time in my life, a process of around two years or so, constant therapy, constant uh, just motions of going through different trials and tribulations, whether that's athletics or academics or something in between. I realized that I needed Jesus when I was going throughout these problems and I kept blaming myself. And I realized that maybe there's another way to get by this. Maybe there's something I can do that can relieve, relieve this stress and pressure in my life to just be the best that I can. And I finally looked into God more as I kept going to Providence for my high school. And they offered chapel services every Thursday. And each one, it felt stronger and stronger in my heart that I should make a connection to the Lord rather than it just being a belief that I had. I knew God existed, but this was the time where I realized I needed to know God. I needed to be in faith with Him, and I needed to find a relationship, and that was my next goal. The day I gave my life to Jesus was our ninth grade retreat. We had this whole day of activities, and near the end we had a worship service, and something just lit inside of me. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the people around me or just the people speaking or singing, but something inside of me just made me burst into tears. And I hugged everyone around me and I couldn't control myself. It got to a point where near the end, people were sharing some of their testimonies and I got up and I decided to share what I, a little bit of what I was going through. And I couldn't even make out words. I was bawling with tears. I couldn't contain myself. And once I finished, I went immediately to a, an empty room and I just went on my knees and I wept. And I just said, God, please accept me in my life. I want you and only you. Throughout my life, it has always been problems, mountains that I had to conquer. But knowing that I had God by my side made things just a little bit easier. And although the roads weren't as easy as I wanted them to be, they became a path that I could follow with someone there always having my back, always praying to. I became more and more confident in not only being myself, but also spreading my word and my uh, advice to others. I became almost like a, a beacon for people to come to for help and if they needed help. I became really into mental health and all the stuff that I went through that I wanted to help other people with. And since then, it's just been an, an uphill climb. It's been hard. Nothing comes easy when following Christ, but I have been one to say that following Jesus has really changed my life. If there's anybody here that is going through anything and you feel like there's just nothing you can do, and no matter what, you feel like you're just in a, a hole that you can't escape out of, God's always there through your struggles. Your suffering does not have to be alone. It is taken care of, and He's going to be with you from now until the ends of the earth. I'm Gabriel, and it is, that is my story. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. You preached a sermon, Gabe. That was great. Gabe, who is Jesus to you? He's my Lord and Savior and the Son of God, and in His righteousness, I'm cleansed. Wow, come on, preach. All right. Hi, I'm Lucy and I'm in ninth grade. Uh, so I grew up in a Christian home. I went to a Christian school all my life, but I never really like felt connected to it. Like I would look around and I would see people being so passionate for God, but I never felt anything different like they did. So I always kind of wondered like, you know, is there something wrong with me? Like, am I doing something wrong? Is there something I could do better? And I never really like tried to seek it out. Like I was always just kind of going through the motions, watching everything happen, you know. And I felt that like as I got older more and more, I would look around and I would see the people on stage and they'd be singing and they'd be doing all the stuff and they'd be looking so passionate about it. And I had no idea what was going on because I didn't feel anything like they did. Well, there was one day um, in the chapel service where we had a guest speaker. I remember he did um, the salvation call and I just found myself raising my hand. I didn't know what was happening or why. And afterwards, I just kind of had this feeling of like, well, now what? And I didn't really know what to do. I didn't really feel like asking anyone because I was kind of embarrassed. I didn't know what they'd think. I didn't want them to say like, oh, were you not a Christian before or whatever, or like be judgmental about it. And I just kind of kept it to myself for a while. And um, then I went to Epworth this year for ninth grade. And 
I remember we um, had the last day and Pastor Ryan was saying that um, if anyone wanted to recommit to being a follower of Jesus, then to raise their hands. And so I did that. And I just kind of sat there thinking like, oh, people are going to notice. People are going to see me walking in there and they're going to have questions. And then in that moment, I just kind of felt like the Holy Spirit tell me like, it doesn't matter. Like the only thing that matters is your relationship with God and not what other people are going to think about you. Uh, ever since then, I've kind of felt a little more like into things. Like I've been more passionate about going to church and going to student services and serving in a church and just like making sure everyone else has the same experience as I do, especially the kids, because I work with um, the kids every Sunday and it's really important to me that they have a good upbringing just like I did so that they can follow Jesus as well and that they can understand everything and also that they, they won't be afraid to ask questions like I was because I was always so nervous to ask someone or say something because I thought I'd be judged for it, but I want them to know that they won't be and that they can ask anyone. I want to get baptized because I want to share with the world my commitment that I made to following Jesus. And I also want to set a little example for other people because I waited so long to actually take my next steps. And that's what I really regret. And I want to show others that God is still going to be patient with them even if they wait. He's still going to love them. He's not going to leave them even if they take time to do it or if they hesitate. Like he's still there. He still loves you. He's, he's still going to be waiting for you even if it takes like a year or two years, a decade, however long. Uh, I really want to thank Beach Church for being such a big part of my life and my upbringing in Christianity. And they really, they really played a big part in me getting to where I am now, and they've really shaped my life and where I want to go in the future. My name is Lucy, and Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Yeah! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great job, Lucy. Lucy, who is Jesus to you? He's my Lord and my Savior and my everything. All right. All right, one more time. Can we give it up for all the students that got baptized tonight? That's so awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back into worship, and, um, <clears throat> and I'm going to do something uh, probably a little bit weird to some of y'all. But here's what, the, the reason why we always close the year in this room is so we have more space. And so I want you to take a moment, if you want to, and just spread out. You don't have to be sitting in a chair. You could be laying on the ground. You could be sitting somewhere in the back. Just, just if, if that's you, just get up and go somewhere. Move. Let's spread out a little bit. Get away from your best friend who you're going to talk to the whole time. Leave your phone in the chair. And let's just spread out. You got all the back of the room. There's two little prayer areas. If you're the first one back there, you'll get dibs on a pillow um, or a little soft chair, whatever. You can come down up here. You can sit down on the ground. You can lay down. Um, or you can stay seated in, in your seat. But I want to do something before we go back in to worship. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join you on the ground. So don't look up here. There's nothing to see. I'm just going to be laying down. Um, here's what I want to do. Sometimes I've never preached lying down, but I'm doing it this time. Sometimes we, uh, we get into worship and, and it's like a lot of movement, like like we're trying to get to something, you know what I mean? Like you're, you know, there's the lights and there's the sound and there's the build up and it's all awesome and none of it's bad or anything. But sometimes, sometimes I don't know about you, but I'll come into worship and it's just kind of like, it's like I'm chasing a feeling. You ever been there? Kind of chasing something. And, um, and I think the cool thing about God is that there are times where he's in that and where you're jumping around and you're celebrating, but there's other times where we just rest, where you don't have to sing where you don't have to have your hands up, where you don't have to even stand up. That's why at the beginning of United, every week we say, stand up, sit down, do whatever you wanna do. Like we mean it. We, we literally want you to be in a comfortable place to interact with God. And there was this, uh, there's this one place in the Old Testament where uh, I believe it's the prophet, prophet Elijah is, is doing this like competition, this God competition against these prophets of Baal. And, and he's like, all right, you guys call on your God. And for hours and hours, they start yelling out to their God and they don't, I mean, their God's not real. And so nothing happens. And eventually they get so desperate that they start like 
doing crazy stuff. Like they start cutting themselves, they start screaming, they start like doing dances and all this kind of stuff. And, and they're, they're killing animals and they're, they're just doing like all these crazy things and yet nothing's happening. And then Elijah walks in and basically he just, he just pours water all over the altar and all over the wood. And if you don't know, like wet wood doesn't light very well. And then he's just like, God, do what you do. And he doesn't dance and he doesn't sing. He just sits there and God comes down in a fire upon that place. And he shows his, his, his power and his, his authority over the world. And the reason why I say all that is sometimes, sometimes we just need to come in and we just need to rest a little bit. And so I'm just going to read a psalm that, that, um, that most of you probably know. It's the most famous psalm in the Bible, Psalm 23. People's got, got it tattooed all over them. They've got it on their walls. They've got it in, you can find it in hospitals and schools all over the place, Psalm 23. And I just want to read it. And I just want everybody to just, if you're physically able, just lay down like I am. Just lay down flat wherever you are and close your eyes. And I just want to take a moment and just rest because as we go into this summer season, we're not doing United and life groups anymore. And it's easy to just get into a place where it's like, like we're just going to jump to the next thing and we're going to fill up all of our time. And I want to challenge you to not jump to the next thing, to just spend a little bit of time resting, resting in God. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to read this Psalm and I just want you to think about it. I'm gonna read it slowly. And I just want you to be quiet and think about the words. These are the words of King David, a song, a poem to God. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Other translations say, I shall not want. There's nothing that you need there's nothing you need outside of God. When you are close to Him, there's nothing else you need. You don't need money. There's a lot of rich people that aren't happy. You don't need success. There's a lot of successful people that aren't happy. You don't need to be the best at a sport or have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. But when you're close to Jesus, you lack nothing. David continues with the, with the words and using this, comp, this, this, this symbolic reference of a, a sheep and shepherd. He says, God makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside quiet waters saying is that God sometimes forces us to rest and to stop. When was the last time you stopped? When was the last time you just rested? I know so often we fill up our time with phones and social media and TV and hang time with our friends and, and we don't just rest. Sometimes we just got to allow God to let us rest. leads us beside quiet waters. Think about that. Imagine a cool stream on a hot day, the sound it makes with no other sounds, no, no cars driving past, no speakers going on, just no phone. It's just quiet. And you hear the, the sound of the water. This is what God wants to lead us into, rest. Verse three, he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. He refreshes my soul. I don't know about you, but I haven't often felt very refreshed lately. So just take a moment and ask God to refresh your soul. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, even though I walk through struggles, temptations, through breakups, 
parents getting divorced, and mental illness, and addiction, and bullying, and not really feeling like I know who I am, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear nothing. I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I don't have to fear. That doesn't mean things are gonna get better all of a sudden. It just means we don't have to be scared because of the presence of God. It's like when you were little, when you're really little and you might've been talking to a friend and and you'd say something about, well, 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 you know, well, my mommy's coming, or my daddy's coming, and they're gonna take care of you, or they're gonna take care of the situation. This is the confidence David has in God here. He's like, man, God's got me. And even though I'm in the worst situation, I don't have to fear anything because his rod and his staff, they comfort us. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a feast before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. When kings would be selected to be kings of Israel, they would be anointed with oil pouring over their head. What David's saying is the anointing is not just for a king, it's for anyone who follows after God that you, seventh grade boy or ninth grade girl or 12th grade guy, that you in Jesus are anointed just the same way a king was. That we don't have to live on empty, but we can have a life that overflows where our cup is full and it just pours over into the lives of the people around us. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And then he closes with an amazing ending, an ending that brings so much, so much rest and confidence and, and security. He says, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Surely, 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 surely your love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I just want to take a moment and just dwell in God's presence. No song, no sound, just us and God.
Lord, pray we would spend more time in silence this summer. No phone, no noise, no music, just you and us. And that you would renew us and refresh us day after day. In your name, amen. I don't want anybody to move. Don't, don't feel like you have to get up. We're going we're gonna to do another song or two, but I don't even, I don't, y'all do, band, y'all do whatever you want to do. Um, we're just going to do a couple songs, and, uh, and y'all don't have to stand. You don't have to sing. You can stay laying down. You can stay in that position. Don't, don't leave the place if, if, if God doesn't want you to leave the place. But we're just going to sing a couple more songs, and then, uh, then we'll close out.
let's pray together and then we'll uh we'll close out heavenly father we thank you that um that we don't have to we don't even have to sing to worship we don't even have to make noise to worship Sometimes you just want us to rest and listen to you and be silent. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't just do that here, that we would do it, that I would do it daily. As we go through this summer, that we would not give up our faith journey over the summer, but that we would lean into you individually. The way a friend spends time with another friend, or the way two siblings spend time together get to know you and listen to you, get to know your heart and understand more about what you want for us. We thank you for this time tonight. Thank you for your love. We thank you for all you've done this, this past year. 25 students that have been baptized, for a whole bunch of others who have given their life to Christ for the first time, for a whole bunch more who have taken a next step in their faith. And we pray for even more next year, more life change, more baptisms, more salvations, more service, more Holy Spirit moments. 